Hi, my name is Natalie. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. I like making crafting tutorials, particularly farmhouse, and today we're going to be making two Easter projects. The majority of the items I did pick up at Dollar Tree along with Walmart, and I'm pretty sure if you're a crafter like me, you have all that already in your stash. I will be showing them to you in the video along with listing them in that description box below. I don't know why I do that, <laughs> but they'll be below. <laughs> I'd like to take the time out to thank everybody that has commented. Oh, those comments are so wonderful. They have liked and have subscribed. And like, like I say, I could talk. Like I say, <laughs> they are making my little channel grow and it's all thanks to you. So I cannot thank you enough. So I kindly ask all you newbies that are watching me for the first time, if you can kindly do the same. Leave a comment, subscribe, also hit that notification bell so this way YouTube will inform you when I'm here again. You can also follow me on Instagram at NatCreatesCrafts. More importantly, I'd like to take the time out to wish and hope that you and your families are all doing well during this troubling time and that you're able to stay home and that you're safe. Now, I don't know about you, but crafting has always been therapeutic for me and it's always put a smile on my face. So I'm hoping that I'm able to do that for you today. So like they say, let's make lemonade out of those lemons and let's get crafting. Our first project is going to be the jute Easter Bunny wall hanging. You're going to need one Easter Bunny wall decor, jute cord, lace beige wired burlap ribbon, one flower pick color of your choice, but I'm guessing you guys know what color I'm going to be using. Glue gun, glue sticks, scissors, and cutting pliers. We're going to start with our tinsel bunny, and you guessed it, we're going to be removing all of that tinsel. It comes off fairly easy. Um, just got to cut it in a few spots and just unravel it. It's amazing how much tinsel is on that one Easter Bunny. Once you're done removing all the tinsel, it has these little bumps that we're going to take our cutting pliers with and just nip them right off. Make sure you get all of the little nubs off, including the ones that are on the inside. But they cut off fairly easy with the pliers. Now that our Easter Bunny is all debumped, <laughs> we're going to take a piece of the jute cord and we're going to start wrapping the belly of the bunny. I put a little bit of hot glue right on the top and then I adhere the rope right to the top of it and then we're going to thread it through the frame. We're going to add a little bit of hot glue to either side of the frame. For the first three or four rows, then once you get past that one brace, you can just start wrapping it until you get to the other brace and then you can continue to glue it. But at this point, you really don't need any glue. You're going to wrap the whole belly of your little bunny. And then once you're done with that, you're going to start weaving through the entire frame of your bunny. Now this would probably be a good time for you to like sit in front of the TV, watch your Netflix while you're doing this because it is a little time consuming, but to me it's like sewing or crocheting for that matter. You just have to add some glue once your jute is at its end. So I usually use smaller pieces of jute. Like I said in the past, it just makes it that much easier to manage and to weave through. I also do glue, put a little bit of hot glue at the end of the jute so this way it does make it easier to thread through, especially in the tighter piece, uh, tighter corners rather. <laughs> As you can see, you don't need any hot glue for this at all. You just need to hold the weave with one hand while you're threading the jute with the other. You're only going to need the hot glue to anchor the beginning of the jute and the end of the jute. 
This little bunny took me about a half an hour to weave. Not too bad, and it was very therapeutic. Now we're going to form a basket for our bunny using a six inch piece of the wired ribbon. You're gonna form it into a cone. Then you're gonna flip the cone to the back. You're gonna add a little bit of hot glue to the end of the ribbon and secure it. Once the glue is dry, we're gonna cut across the top edge. Then we're gonna glue the back of our little cone basket. And then we're gonna adhere it to the bottom of our bunny. Now we're going to take three sprigs of any flower of your choosing. Of course, you know which one I took. I took the greenery off the middle stem and then I glued the other two pieces with the greenery and then just put the greenery in the center. It's just the way I liked how the flowers were arranged. You can use more stems if you'd like, but three were just enough for me. Now it's time to make the bow for our bunny. I used about a 12 inch piece of our ribbon, looped it, pinched it in the center, took a little bit of jute, wrapped it around about four times to create the bow, secured it in the back with some hot glue, then I cut off the excess jute, then added a little bit of glue to the back of the bow, and then secured it to the side of our little bunny's head. Now for our anchor, I took about a seven inch piece of jute, made a knot, cut off the ends, put a little bit of hot glue right where the knot is, and then secured it to the back of our little bunny. Our little farmhouse Easter bunny is all done. I absolutely love it. And I'm gonna be hanging her right above my sink. But like I said, you can use any flowers of any color that suit your decor. But no surprise, you know which color I love the best. Our second project is going to be the Happy Easter Bunny sign. You're going to need one egg-shaped wall decor, bunny wood cutouts, the galvanized words for Easter, natural raffia, beige wired burlap ribbon, jute cord, nautical rope, Waverly chalk paint in the colors cashew, truffle, mineral, and elephant. Sorry, I don't have the picture of the elephant. Paint brushes, glue gun, glue sticks, scissors, and cutting pliers. We're going to use the back of the sign to make our project. It's just easier and it's also flat and smooth. So you're going to apply one good coat using the color cashew and make sure that your coat dries completely. Once your first coat is dry, you're going to now take the truffle and your brush, and you're going to distress the egg using a dry brush technique. I just go in the shape or in the direction <laughs> of the egg, but don't worry about the harsh marks because we're gonna go over it again with a little bit of the cashew just to blend the streaks in and make the distress look a little softer. Now we're gonna take a piece of the jute cord, the length of our egg, and we're gonna glue it on either end, right in the center. Then you're gonna flip your egg back. I'm gonna take a ruler and go from the center, and we're going to make an inch and a quarter marks on either side of the egg. We're gonna use those marks to place the additional jute that we're going to glue on either end. Once you're all gluing, it's gonna look like that and you're gonna repeat the process on the other side of your egg. Now we're gonna take our nautical rope and we're gonna glue it on the perimeter of the egg. Once I get the rope glued down, I like to twist it just a little bit because the rope tends to unravel and it also looks a lot neater. When you get to the end, you're gonna cut off the excess. Make sure you put some glue on the ends as well.
Now it's time to decorate our bunnies. We're gonna use two bunny cutouts. They do have little holes on the top. I'm just gonna put a little bit of hot glue in them. You could use spackle, but hot glue works just fine. Then we're gonna take our elephant paint and we're going to give each bunny one good coat and let it dry completely. Now it's time for our second coat. We're gonna use the color mineral, a damp paper towel, and our brush. We're gonna brush a little bit of that mineral right over the bunny, and then we're gonna take our damp paper towel and we're going to blend the color in like you would a stain. You're gonna do that for both of your little bunnies, and you're gonna let that completely dry. Now that our second coat is dry, we're going to be doing the bunny's tail. You could use cotton balls. I just use a little bit of leftover batting I had from an old pillow. I balled it up and then I just glued them to both ends. Now it's time to address our words. I use the color truffle and we're going to use the word happy and Easter. And with the stippling brush, I'm just going to tap the color right over the letters just to give it like a rusted look. Now it's time to arrange our egg. I put the word happy on the top, the two bunnies, and then the word Easter on the bottom. Once I was happy with my placement, I then took my hot glue and just glued everything down. Just be careful when gluing those metal letters because they get pretty hot. I then made a hanger using a 7 inch piece of jute. I knotted it on either end and then I glued it to the back, adding extra glue to the top just to make it secure. Now it's time to make our bow. I took a few strands of the raffia and I looped it, pinched it in the middle, then took a little bit of jute and wrapped that jute around the middle a couple of times. Then I took about a 12 inch piece of the burlap ribbon, looped it. That's gonna be our actual bow on the top. Then I took a seven inch piece of the burlap ribbon, folded it in half, then fold it lengthwise, cut it at a diagonal, and that's our tail. Then I assembled everything together, pinching the burlap ribbon on the top, putting the raffia on the bottom, and then pinching the tail and holding it all together then wrapping it around with the jute. I wrapped it about four times. Then I glued the jute to the back, secured the rope, cut off the excess, fluffed it a little bit, put some glue on the back, and then glued it right to the top of our egg, and then fluffed it a little bit more. Our second project is all done. I gotta admit, I think this one is one of my favorites. It's rustic, it's farmhouse, it's neutral. But like I always say, you can always switch out the colors that suit your decor. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can also follow me on Instagram at NatCreatesCrafts. Wishing you and your family to be safe and well. Please leave a comment and subscribe, so this way we'll be seeing each other next time. Until then, happy crafting, God bless, and take care.